All right, inspection time. Look at my eyes for as long as you can without blinking. Starting now. Good. Look up. Now look down. You're doing swell. Now, name and occupation. I could do without the sass, but that's good enough. You're cleared. That was a sanity check. If you had changed like the others, it'd be in your eyes. You'd also be drooling, cursing, and making a mess of the place. Welcome to the Sprat Shack. You can head on downstairs. Every day, salvagers and scrappers set out to comb the ruins and make their fortune. The ones who come back, they aren't always the same men or women who left. They change. Never for the better. First, they get real twitchy and paranoid, shouting at folks who aren't there. Then they smell like they soiled themselves, on account of how they soiled themselves. After that, they're gone. Nothing but animals wearing human skin. Seen it happen myself. It's never pretty. This is the Sprat Shack, the most remote watering hole in the system. Rule number one, no fighting. Rule number two, wipe your feet on the way downstairs. We're the only hospitable place on this rock. I want to keep it that way. That's why we have rule number three. When people change, they stay outside, where they belong. Just don't ask me to dance. Bouncer, bodyguard, law enforcer. I make sure the Sprat Shack gets only the highest caliber of clientele. And I thought this place was gonna be fun. We get a lot of brand-loyal corporate types, and a lot of cutthroat freelancer types. Both sides have their share of dirty scoundrels. And I hate dirt. This is a sublight bar, so most of our regulars come to plunder the old labs. The facility's locked up behind miles of red tape, so progress is slow. A lot of time to drink and reevaluate, then venture out and try again. Something bad happened here. Spacer's Choice was developing chemicals. The kind with nasty side effects. Marauders outnumber the rest of us ten to one. Either they came from Gorgon, or something draws them here. I don't know which is worse. This place is under a dark cloud, stranger. That's all I know. If you want the history of the Sprat Shack, talk to Lex behind the bar. Watch yourself out there. Smell that? Cheap whiskey and stale cigarettes. My kind of place. Merchandise. Welcome to the Sprat Shack. First one's on the house, and I won't even water it down. What'll it be? Bottoms up. I assume you're here for salvage. Even if I did, I ain't supposed to play favorites. Most of my regulars are sublight scavengers. They pick over the ruins of Gorgon, spend their earnings at the bar, and uh, head back out the next day. Vicious cycle, but that's life. 
You're the first new face I've seen in a while. Lucky. Sure, I knew him. He could get a little... dramatic at times, but he was a good guy. Heard he took on a dangerous job. Spent a lot of time coming and going from the Office of Creative Incubation, just down the road. The way he talked about the job, you just knew Lucky had hit pay dirt. Not that I was jealous. Around here, that sort of luck can be uh, hazardous to your health. Uh, awful shame about what happened to him. You know about that? Huh. Word must travel fast around these parts. I saw of Lucky was a few days ago. I went outside for a smoke and a stroll, and I saw this wild canid dragging a bloody limb. So I kicked the canid, scared it off. Get this. The canid was chewing on an honest-to-law human arm. Lucky's arm. I'm a bartender. Attention to detail is my middle name. Anyway, the arm was clutching a phonograph that mentioned someone named Alex Hawthorne. I did some poking around, and this Hawthorne has a reputation among the uh, <clears throat> salvagers who frequent the bar. So I packaged up the arm nice and tidy and sent it care of the Halcyon Parcel Service. They even gave me a discount on the hazardous waste removal stamp. No kidding. And now you're here? Colony feels smaller than you'd think some days. I'm glad I was here to see this uh, confluence of events, you know? The stars really aligned on this one. And here I am, smack dab in the middle. I figured Hawthorne would want to know what happened to his pal. Help Lucky get his affairs in order, you know. Oh, I hate to see people go with unfinished business. Third floor. Once I figured he wasn't coming back to pay his tab, I left his room unlocked to air it out. You can help yourself to anything you left behind. Fair warning, I've been letting the regulars use it for a quick lie down. Just wash your hands when you're done. Trust me. Spacer's Choice used to brew pharmaceuticals in these parts. That's why the asteroid smells like an old gym sock. They say Adrena time came from here. Just down the road at the old R&D lab. Very hush-hush back in the day. Roscoe might tell you more. He spent some time around here before the bar opened up. And I trust him well enough. There's always Leonora, my favorite customer over in the storage room on the second floor. Keeps to herself and always closes out her tab. He's been here since opening day. I think he told me he was some kind of journalist. He got left behind when Spacer's Choice pulled out. And I guess no one's coming to get him. He didn't tell me and I didn't ask. I'm his bartender, not his human resources rep. If you believe the chatter, a lot of good folks got left behind and a lot of bad folks made it out. Sometimes... That's all there is to it. Roscoe's drinks are on the house. We all know how it feels to get left behind. He'll be all right. He's with the family now, and we take care of our own. Nice lady. Been coming around a lot these past few months. She isn't with Sublight, but seems to know the lay of the land better than anyone. She spends most of her days drinking alone. I think she's looking to hire someone. If you're open to a side gig. Now that you mention it, I thought I saw those two sharing stories over a pint. Didn't think twice about it. I don't speak ill of the dead, but Leonora deserves better company. 
That Lucky was no good for her. He's been here since opening day. He got left... What are friends for, eh? I doubt anyone knows the full story. One day the evacuation order went out. Grunts and lab coats scrambled to get anywhere but Gorgon. And the weirdest thing of all, Adrena time still hit the market. Me, I never touch the stuff. To each their own, but I think it's dangerous. Damn right we are. We've got drugs, scrap metal, prototype weapons, drugs, money, and more drugs. When Spacer's Choice evacuated, everyone dropped their gear and ran. Most of it stayed where it fell, and all of it is up for grabs. Of course, the real treasure is whatever's locked up in the old facility. Until someone figures a way to crack it open, we're just sifting through dirt. You got it, bub. Yes and no. The Sprat Shack used to be a shipping and receiving warehouse during the old Project Gorgon days. When Spacer's Choice pulled their guys off world, Sublight moved in to uh, salvage what we could, and they put me in charge. Yes and no. Rumor has it there's a Sprat wandering around the Groundbreaker, and he's the legal owner of the Sprat Shack. Hagen's idea. See, Hagen didn't want a paper trail that led back to her, so she gave the bar to the Sprat. If there were any legal problems with this place, the Sprat would do the time. You know, they do something similar in Byzantium. Fancier system, but same idea. Anyway, that's what the paperwork says. I don't make the rules. I know there's paperwork backing it up. You put enough stamps and staples on anything, I'm pretty sure it's legal by default. The beautiful thing is, no one could tell Matt Spratt apart from an ordinary vermin. I think that's kind of the point, to send the authorities on a wild Spratt chase. Never thought about that. Shit, someone could have eaten my boss. As far as business arrangements go, this one's a head-scratcher, but they say it's all above board, so that's what matters. Yes and no. We're doing a lot more than squatting. We're classing up the joint, keeping the riffraff outside where it belongs. They didn't even serve drinks until I arrived. Talk about wasted potential. Yes. And no. Again, that one was Hagen's idea. She told me that speaking in vague terms keeps you out of trouble. And I don't want any trouble in my place. Thirsty people come and go from all over the colony. Mostly on the way to somewhere better. Some are well-connected. And not everyone pays with bits. That's how we get the unconventional goods anyhow. Sublight keeps us well-stocked with the essentials. By which I mean booze. Don't forget to close your tab when you're done. This rock ain't much to look at, but it's... Seen any good salvage around? That was my salvage, Trixie! You had no right to it then, and you've no right to it now! A disagreement between professionals. None of your business. I risked my life sneaking around Marauders to claim that wreck. And I didn't see your name on it. Now you've done it! Eat fist! All right, that's enough! 
This is a family establishment. You want to make a mess? You make it outside. But this was personal, Lex. It's a question of salvage. That wreck was gonna make me a fortune. Oh, it's the same fight every day. Five years we've been at this, and we still can't agree on how to properly tag salvage. Now you two listen, this is my place. While you're in the Sprat Shack, you'll sit quietly, or I'll forbid you to come here at all. Is that understood? Fair's fair. I'll have a stout, and we'll settle this later on our own terms. Ah, oh, it's no good to leave a fight unresolved. If I don't do something, these two are gonna be at each other's throats. Would you do me a favor and weigh in as a third party? I can use an unbiased set of eyes on the problem, and an outsider like you fits the bill. If you wouldn't mind. This isn't Von Hoffman material. Calling up Von Hoffman would be like swatting a fly with a sledgehammer. Freddy, Trixie, go on and make your case to the generous stranger. I'll start, seeing as I'm the one who's been most wronged in this equation. Oh, very formal. <clears throat> Freddy the Scab, freelancer for sublight salvage and shipping, same as my father before me. Junkyard Trixie, also a salvage freelancer, though... I've been at it longer than Freddy. So, uh, just up the road and due east of here, there's a shipwreck lodged in the mountainside, right? I staked my claim on that wreck. Then I wandered in for a drink. An hour later, Trixie swaggers in bragging about her salvage. Ugh, the nerve of some people. When I found the shipwreck, there were no salvage mark. See, the whole area was teeming with bloodthirsty marauders. So I snuck around and added my tag. Clear as day so no drunken idiots could claim the salvage out from under me, Freddy. For the record, when I heard the marauders coming, I left. Trixie must have set her mark down after me. Quit leading the prosecution, Hullhead. Anyway, that's my story, sir. I drew next in the dirt, with my toe. Wouldn't surprise me in the least, but that doesn't mean it ain't mine. In all my years, I've never heard a more contentious argument. I don't envy your shoulders for bearing the weight of responsibility. You've heard it from them both. So, who gets the salvage? I knew you'd see the righteousness of my claim. Pleasure doing business with you. That ain't fair. Lex, I want to file an appeal. You can waste time on paperwork, or you can go find some salvage to call your own. Your choice. Here's a six-pack on the house, plus your fee. Maybe now we'll finally get some peace around here for a change. I'll write to Lilia Hagen in the corporate office on Groundbreaker. She'll get some haulers to drag it away. It'll take a while. Nothing happens fast around these parts. But at least the salvage would get a good home. A little too often, if you ask me. But that's the sublight way. Anything worth doing is worth fighting over. Come and chat if you're ever feeling thirsty. We could always go back and rile him up again later. 
We're all friends here, even when we ain't. The board is gonna force everyone into pods. Sound crazy? You here for salvage or merchandise? I wouldn't get too close to that railing. Just in case. This is a family business. Chin up. Look. You here for salvage or merchandise? Your own would have loved this place. You don't look like one of the salvagers, no? Don't really seem like the type. You've got the look of someone who's traveled far to get here and whose journey is far from over. Confidence. The scavengers around here, they're faking it. You're the real deal. I don't know if you're bound for the old runes, but in case you are, can you look into something? I'd do it myself, but of course the marauders would eat me alive. <laughs> Um, looking for something out there. Been paying Sublight to help me, but they haven't made much progress. Well put. My husband and I worked on Gorgon during the good times. Jerome was on maintenance duty. I cleaned out test tubes till they sparkled. No, we're good, that's for sure. In his final hours, Gorgon was a war zone. Violence broke out in the labs. The hills were full of marauders. You couldn't take a leisurely stroll without an armed escort. When the order came through to evacuate, non-essential personnel drew a lottery to see who would board the first wave of ships. Jerome won. I lost. As soon as I wasn't looking, Jerome switched our tickets and pushed me to the front of the line. I got to leave. Jerome stayed behind. I never saw him again. A broken heart, that's what. This place is greedy. It took my Jerome, and it would have taken me too. I just want one thing back. His old hip flask. I gave it to him the day we signed our marriage contract, and he carried it wherever he went. I know it's still here. No point in denying it, he died on this rock, likely torn apart by marauders, unless he took care of himself on his own terms. I don't like to imagine what happened, but I know I have to accept it. You'd really do that for me? Law, and I'll bet you're worth ten of those sublight sprats. I don't have much, but if you help me, there's a little set aside for the occasion. Jerome used to drink with his buddies in a small kitchen opposite the maintenance shed. Might be a good place to check first. Yeah? That old flirt? Yeah, I let him buy me a drink or two. He talked my ear off about exciting jobs he'd done. All lies, I'm sure. He fell asleep with his head on my shoulder. That man had baggage like you wouldn't believe. I didn't think anyone could be lonelier than me. He bragged about having the key to some sort of maintenance area in one of the old buildings. I never saw it, so I just assumed he was talking himself up. He also asked if I wanted to see something gross and slimy he kept in his room, but I declined, politely. He put on quite a front, but I think he was weary, like he'd seen too much and had too little to show for it. Guess we were kindred spirits in a way. Sure thing, my condolences if you two were close. The lab coats kept quiet about the project, but the air was charged with excitement. You could feel it wherever you went. They wanted to change the world. 
A tenfold boost to worker productivity with no side effects? Who wouldn't salivate at the thought? I don't know what went wrong, but when the shit hit the fan, it sprayed everyone in its path, including me. This is a family business. Get up. Look. That last drink you ordered had a punch to it. What did you say it was called? Lunar Eclipse Mix. It's just pep pills and a two hour energy brew. My ex used to have. Huh, who's this now? I wonder if they could. Ah, who am I kidding? Holy shit, a fresh face. Haven't seen your like in years. Don't know what brought you to the most dangerous corner of this solar system, pal, but you're welcome here. Oh, you talked to Lex yet? She tell you to keep it civil? You wouldn't guess to talk to her, but that lady's got a mean left hook. Some kind. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Got into reporting thinking I was going to be some sort of public intellectual. What a joke. Spent 95% of my time playing stenographer to the board, and the rest writing puff pieces on the chairman's latest beard trim. Real life and death shit. When the project fell apart, Spacer's Choice refused to extract me. They left me here to rot. Listen, I hate asking for handouts, but my back's against the wall here. If you're going back out there, do you think you'd be willing to do an old bastard a small favor? Told you I was a journalist, right? I was here on a story back when Project Gorgon was active. I was doing an interview series for Spacer's Choice. Recorded them all on these little portable phonographs. But when everything fell to shit, Spacer's Choice wouldn't let me leave. In terms of my reporting contract unmet, they said. Right on the money. Look at me, I'm no fighter. I've never even touched a gun. But you, you're just the right amount of rough around the edges. Help me get my recordings back so I can finally get the hell out of here. Someone had been trying to steal them since the day my assistant and I started interviewing. Couldn't even keep them in my safe. They always found a way in. So I took to hiding them all over the fucking asteroid. Thought I was so clever. What a fool I was. Oh, I've tried. Make no mistake. I've caught a couple of rides out with sublight folks. But the board's fixers always send me right back. And I'm not about to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with marauders just to fulfill a line item on a contract. I've got some bits saved up. Haven't had anything to spend them on but beer. And Lex has been letting me drink for free. It's nothing extravagant, you know, journalist salary and all. But the bits are yours if you want them. No shit? That's downright civilized of you. All right. One of them I stash in the Office of Creative Incubation, in the projector room on the third floor. I gave another to my friend Bertie to keep in her apartment, just outside OCI's upper entrance. Seems like a good idea at the time. Someone had started a fire, folks were shooting other folks. It was a madhouse. You'll find another in the chem lab. It's in the main lab storage room. Didn't have much of a choice. The primals had gotten loose, couple of them were chasing me. The recordings just ended up wherever I hid. The final one is in human inquiry and auditing. 
It's tucked behind a pipe in observation room B. What with the test subjects running loose, the researchers were surprisingly unobservant. Strength to your sword arm, friend. And thank you. Seen any good south? We're all friends here, even when we ain't. What's the story with this place anyhow? Used to be a shipping warehouse. Supplies came Quit in. Staring. Deadly chemicals. Watch went your out. step. Who told you that? Sees I worked everything. here back in the day. You're pulling my leg. No, nope, it's true. There. Adrena time, I think. I found some in an old busted crate. That is very well preserved and disgusting. Something on your mind? You know I've got no love for top rungers. But if Minnie's willing to pay, I say we take her money. Sure, like Ada said, he was a big name among freelancers. I met him at Lost Hope once. He was buying rounds for everyone and telling a story about one of his jobs. Pretty sure half of it was made up. Exactly. There was just something about Montoya I couldn't quite trust. He was always at the center of a room, and he slapped a lot of backs to stay there. Don't get me wrong, anyone's tolerable when they're paying your tab. Lucky was just better at selling himself than he was at anything else. I'm trying to say that if he screwed this job up, that's on him. I still like our odds. He may have had a rep, but you're more capable than he ever was. Hey, I only throw in with winners. What's on your mind? Sure. Something on your mind? one really emptied my guts. No, wait. Here comes more.
You find anything out there, you let me know. I'm ready to get off this rock. Sorry about Freddy and Trixie. When they're not fighting over salvage, they're fighting over the bed sheets at night. They like to blow off steam during work hours, but as soon as they clock out, they turn into a pair of kittens. So, what'll it be? As a matter of fact, he did. Collateral for the bar tab he was racking up. So, I guess it's mine now. And no, you can't have it. No. Maybe. All right, yes. Here. I don't know what it unlocks, but Lucky seemed to think it was important. I take him at his word. Come back when you're thirsty. Are you my agent on the ground? Sorry? About a certain piece of merchandise. They're supposed to use a secret code. Hey! hey! I saw that! You! Entering quiet mode. What do you think you're doing? All right, but don't let me catch you again. Lucky's problem was that he was always overconfident in himself. But us? We got this. Whatever it is. Setting clean mode to sensitive care.
Preparing for extermination. This unit is currently in wait cycle. Please return later. Have a better than natural day.
Sam says, let your auto mechanical do the dirty work while you keep your hands clean. Why do I have a feeling we're not gonna like what's in there? <laughs> 